Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you guys are enjoying your Wednesday morning so far and having a great day. What we're going to do is just talk about the weather specifically for today. Your Wednesday, April the 20th, moving right along through April trying to get to May. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. I make weather videos twice a day, one in the mornings, one in the evening to try to keep you guys updated. So definitely hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. I appreciate y'all's ongoing support, even though things have kind of started to slowly slow down in the weather world as we gear up for the next, whenever the next significant event will be. So I really appreciate people who can continue to tune in regardless of how active the weather is. If you guys got anything I can pray about, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it. And more importantly, it gives a lot of others an opportunity to pray over you also. So let's get going here and talk about what's going on well this is the satellite view you got another system starting to enter the state of oregon and washington state where i am expecting some uh a disturbance in the weather a disturbance in the force if you will here in the weather world here in oregon as some nasty weather moves on shore from uh, the pacific ocean and then you have a lot of convection going on a lot of showers and storms in the state of arkansas right now and uh, we'll have to see how much of a player this is in, in severe weather in places like Oklahoma, Southeast Kansas, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, a little bit later today where there is a slight risk, a level two out of five for some severe storms. But it's weird, you know, the short range models overnight has actually somewhat done away with how much convection we're actually going to have in this area. The dynamics are somewhat there, but are we going to have storm development in this region that does have a slight risk? So let's go on and talk about that. First off, I will show you the radar image out the Arkansas area. A lot of showers and storms. Not much in the way of storms, but just a lot of heavy rain. Little Rock, you're waking up to a messy morning commute. Um, you're also having rainy conditions in areas of uh, northwest Arkansas and western Arkansas in general where the rain is a little bit heavier. You have more in the way of storms. So uh, let's go on and switch off and look at the Storm Prediction Center, what we're looking at, as for, looking at as far as this. You still got the slight risk, including Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Norman, Oklahoma, and a very, very, very small section of northwest Arkansas, and then southwest Missouri, and then a section of far southeast Kansas where there's a slight risk, and then you got the marginal risk extending northeast and eastward. Really, you know, if you're in a slight risk today in areas of Oklahoma, there's a chance you might not see any rain at all. You know, it's going to be a weird kind of conditional event where not everybody's going to see a severe storm, but the people who do could be pretty intense. There is a low risk of a tornado, 2% risk in 25 miles in a given location. It is a chance of wind, damaging winds happen at 15% risk in this yellow area, 25 miles in a given point. And then you got a hail threat, which is really, I think, what the Storm Prediction Center is the most concerned about. There's a hatch risk. I mentioned the possibility of this last night in last night's video, talking about there could be a hatch risk inside of this 15% risk. So the black outlined area, that means there is a 10% risk of larger, <coughs> excuse me, larger hail, basically. So two inch diameter hail or larger and even 25 miles and even given point in this black outlined area. So if storms do can get do get developed in this area, there is a chance for some larger hell. So we need to really pay attention to that. But let's talk about the eastern U.S. as a whole. We have a lot of rain that will continue to move through Arkansas, Missouri this morning. And then as you're getting into the late morning hours, it will start to inch towards Illinois and then western areas of Tennessee, heck, even areas of northern Mississippi. We're starting to get to the afternoon hours. The rain will somewhat diminish. I'm not really expecting any way of any storms, but you're going to have some snow in northern Minnesota. Rain, and maybe heavier rain, moving out of Minnesota into Wisconsin as you're getting into the afternoon hours. You got rain in uh, central and eastern Iowa and uh, rain in Missouri that is entering Illinois, as I said before. And then you got some rain moving into the areas of the mid-south and deep-south Mississippi, western areas of Tennessee and Kentucky as we're getting into our evening hours. So, Probably a wet, messy commute for those areas, and the rain will continue into the kind of the later overnight hours into Indiana, maybe even Ohio, and then deeper into Kentucky and Tennessee, getting close to Nashville in the middle of the night. Maybe some rain showers are certainly possible. And then we start to watch this area. Will any convection get going? Um, and I'll talk about that here briefly here in a second. But as far as high temperatures, we finally are starting to lose the influence of this troughing, which is a cold front. It remains pretty chilly in the interior northeast, especially where you guys 
still have snow on the ground, which I'm sure a lot of you do guys do here in the Appalachian Mountains and the higher elevations of the interior northeast. But along the coastal sections, you know, the I-95 corridor, Boston to New York City, uh, southern New England, you start to gradually warm into the 40s and maybe even some 50s for some areas. New Jersey, you know, the northern half of the state probably locked into the 50s. But as you're getting to the southern half of the state, close to Delaware, places like that, it will inch closer to 60. Uh, the Delmarva area and Maryland in general, you're starting to warm up. Any snow that fell in these areas right into here will certainly have some melting done today as you guys are warming to the 40s and 50s with that late April sun angle that's equivalent to an August sun angle will really do a number on this snowpack if there's any left at all from yesterday. But Certainly uh, warming up here in the southeast, getting into the 60s and 70s in the Carolinas, and then warming up even more here in the deep south, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, even Tennessee, ahead of this rain, Kentucky, 70s, 60s and 70s for highs, 70s and 80s for highs in Florida. And then you get into, into Texas and Oklahoma, some big-time surface heating occurring well into the 80s and even 90s in west central Texas. And then you're getting into Nebraska, Kansas, and the Dakotas is mainly South Dakota, warming into the 60s and 70s. Set, the warmer it is, the further south you go. And then you got that rain-cooled air all the way into Arkansas today. Well, highs will struggle to get out the 40s and 50s, where you have more cloud cover and more rain. So Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, areas of Indiana, Iowa, Minnesota, 40s and 50s for high temperatures, a little bit warmer the more south you go. But let's briefly talk about the severe weather threat. We'll take a look at the HRRR model first. We'll start this off by about early to mid-afternoon for areas like Oklahoma, Kansas, areas of uh, Missouri and, and Arkansas. You keep this going. And, you know, here's this one, one lone storm around 6, 7, 8 p.m., give or take an hour back or forward. And you have this storm here in far eastern areas of Kansas that might be severe. Um, uh, but you keep going into the evening hour well after the sun goes down. You're thinking, well, where is the storm development? There is none. On the latest HRRR model, compared to the video I did last night, there's now no storm development. And uh, there's, a, there's a number of reasons why there's a little bit of a cap in place, in especially the further north you go, which is, remember, that area of a more stable air, a little bit higher up in the atmosphere, several thousand feet up in the atmosphere. And then, you know, you watch for this area how... How much does this, uh, you know, the atmosphere destabilize? There's still a big question mark with that. But, uh, you know, there is some dynamics in place, especially surface heating. There's a, a decent amount of surface moisture in place with dew points rising into the 60s. But there's some limiting factors. It's really preventing any big time storm development. But there is a slight risk in this area. But you're thinking, where's the storms that uh, correlate with that slight risk? Well, there, there might not be any. And when you look at the NAM, and the NAM has kind of followed suit. It does, the NAM does show as you're getting into, you know, around dinner time around Oklahoma City, you know, maybe give or take an hour. Oklahoma City, it shows some convection fire finally firing up. Where storms do form, they could be severe, produce a quick tornado, maybe, and really produce some large hail and damaging winds. But that's the question is, do they form in this area today? And the NAM and the HRRR model doesn't show much. Now, you get into the overnight hours, it does show... Uh, an area boundary of storms that really develop here in this region, but I don't see anything that's like uh, really big time developing. But the dynamics are there for something to develop. And so the atmosphere really destabilizes in this area. I really think especially more into Oklahoma. And you will have a chance for some severe storms. You move out west, uh, really quiet. Uh, a little bit, it's definitely more quiet for areas like Montana, Wyoming, maybe some stray showers of snow or rain, depending on your elevation. But uh, desert southwest um, is desert-like conditions, remains dry. Middle of the, middle of the uh, western areas, the Rocky Mountains, uh, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Idaho, Nevada, you guys stay pretty dry. But a system begins to move. And in fact, there's some chance for some severe storms um, in areas of uh, eastern um, Oregon today. You know, you, you go back and you look at this, uh, there is a marginal risk for severe storms. Eugene, watch out, points east. So all the coastal regions of Oregon actually has a 2% risk to see a tornado at 25 miles on any given point and also a hail and a wind threat. So you don't see this often, but dynamics are there for a quick spin up. I would not be surprised to see a tornado warning out here in Oregon today. So it'll be very interesting to see, but otherwise a higher elevation snow, lower elevation, heavy rain, maybe a quick uh, severe thunderstorm that could produce maybe a quick tornado 
and then waves of rain continue throughout the state of Oregon and Washington State as they move more east and try to get into Idaho. This will be our next big system that continues to promote severe weather um, for the middle of the country. As far as heating, more rain-cooled air uh, for this area right here as the system moves down, moves into these areas like Oregon and Washington State. But, you know, you're going to have an atmosphere prime for some cold core storms. So you might have some severe storms in the 40s and 50s. It happens, and that's how they do out in the Pacific Northwest, that's for sure. Um, the southwest, you know, not quite as warm as the last couple days, but, you know, around average. And then the valleys of California, 60s and 70s, Nevada, 60s and 70s, especially down close to Las Vegas, much warmer. Uh, Wyoming, um, you know, it's a pretty nice day. The only places that are get really cold is the higher elevations of Yellowstone National Park up there in northwest Wyoming. But the plains warming well into the 50s and 60s. And then you're still locking in the cold air where I think you still got snow on the ground here in the North Dakota, but you guys could reload up on some snow. I'll talk about that briefly here at the end, but you know, it's pretty wild to see big time heating all the way up in the South Dakota. So the plains, uh, the, the flatlands of um, Colorado warming, warming well into the seventies and close to 80 severe weather expected tomorrow. This is kind of popped up and this could be a bigger event, a higher chance of a tornado and a high chances of hell. So We'll talk about this tonight. We got to figure out what's going to happen with this. And we'll talk more about that in this evening's video. But we're also still watching the chance for a significant snowstorm ramping up as early as overnight Friday into Saturday morning for Wyoming and then pivoting more into Saturday as a big time negatively tilted trough really increases the dynamics. And you'll have a chance for heavy snow for eastern Montana, western and the western Dakotas, and then even areas of northwest nebraska and obviously wyoming this could be a big event that lasts the entire weekend so we'll talk more about that tonight god bless all y'all hope you all have an excellent wednesday and i'll talk to y'all this evening